Good morning, and welcome to church. It's going to be a great week this next week. The South Dakota State girls get to play another game. Uh, Toledo gets to play another game. That's where, that's where Bella is at. Watched the game yesterday, and uh, she was sitting right there on the bench, cheering them on. Uh, she looks pretty short next to those other girls. <laughs> so hopefully her speed has gotten a lot better. Uh, but she's got another year to, to wait. Anyway, anything from you guys? Any good stuff? Jack. We were blessed this week with a new baby boy, great grandson. <laughs> Cooper, Cooper, we kind of followed the Watsels. We got Cooper. <laughs> well, that's not a bad group to follow. Well, if we got nothing else. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Becky. I'm glad you guys got here. Because you're going to get to cry together the first, first song. Anyway, Doug, you got a video? Please stand. <laughs> Heavenly Father, as we come into your house today, watch over each and every one of us as we sing your praises, as we open our hearts, our minds, our souls, and listen to the words of Pastor John as we talk about spiritual gifts today. Shine your mercies down upon us, Lord. Be kind to us because we make our mistakes and we want to repent every time. So help us to sing loud and sing to the best of our ability. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. First song. God sent his son to make all him Jesus. 
coming this way than it is going that way. You guys are really good. Our next song is God With Us. Uh, I said this to Pastor John this morning as I was practicing before. I have to practice more than the rest of these guys. Anyway, I was here practicing and I couldn't do the whole song because if you think of the words, you live the words, It's a painful experience. <coughs> Who are we that you would be mindful of us? What do you see that's worth looking our way we are free in ways that we never should be sweet release from the grips of these
love we cannot afford. Like hinges straining from the way, my heart no longer can keep from singing. All that is within me cries for you alone. Scripture reader this morning, Acts 8, 4 through 8. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the multitudes with them accord gave heed to what was said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs which he did. The unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city, Acts 8, 26 through 39. But an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south of, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. <clears throat> and he rose and went, and behold, an Ethiopian, a eunuch, and a minister of the Candace, queen of Ethiopians, in charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot, his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture which was, he was reading was this, As a sheep led to the slaughter or a lamb before its sh- shearer is dumb so he opens not his mouth in his humiliation justice was denied him who can describe his generation for his life is taken up from the earth and the eunuch said to philip about whom pray 
Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with his scripture, he told him the good news of Jesus. As they went along the road, he came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down to the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught up Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his rejoicing, on his way rejoicing. Acts 10, 44 through 48. While Peter was still saying this, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who came with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone forbid water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. The children can come up, and while they're coming up, I have a few announcements. Jim, you kind of cut that off fast, that announcement, so you can get a chance. Um, You have a little green thing in here, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Take a look at it. If you are certain of what your spiritual gifts are, circle which ones you have. Then I want you to put your name on it, pass it to the center aisle, and just leave it there on the pew, and I'll pick them up later. Okay, and then I'll explain a little more about that a little later on. I also want to talk about the upcoming Seder, uh, Christian uh, Seder meal we're having on Monday, Thursday, which is a week from this coming Thursday. See if I get that right. No. No. Two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And um, sign up on that sheet because we need to give Lizzie uh, a number of what she needs to prepare for the meal and stuff. And I need to let uh, Lois Solberg know she's the one leading us. And so she'll have to know how many Haggadahs she needs to get. That isn't something you eat. It's something you read, just to let you know on that. So um, I needed to say those two announcements. Now, Let's get to the, to the issue at hand. I've got to ask you guys, guys and gals this morning, have, have you been adopted? No. Are you sure? Have you been adopted? How about you? How about you? No? You? I know you have. I'm going to tell you what I mean. I'm tricking you. <laughs> Oh, so how do you and I become Christians? Did you know we're adopted? Oh, now I I know you guys got biological parents, but I want to share something with you out of John's Gospel. This, This happens to be one of my most favorite verses in the Bible. This will tell me that you're adopted. Here, listen. To all who received him, that's Jesus, who believe in his name, he gave the power to become children of God who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of man, but of God. When we come to Jesus Christ, when we make him our best friend, okay, you guys know what a friend is. You have, how many here have friends? Raise your hands. Oh, okay. You know, I got friends, you got friends. So you understand what a friend means. It's kind of a special person we have in our life. When you make Jesus Christ your friend, I'm not using the term Lord and Savior because you probably don't know what that means except for him. (laughs) But, okay, when you make him your friend, did you know you're adopted? Yeah, that's right. You're adopted into God's family. And, of course, when we're baptized, that's a symbol of that adoption. And your parents... I'm sure did that most of you probably did that when you were just a baby. Speaking of which, we got three baptisms next Sunday at the second service. A bunch of the Nodell family is getting is having kids that are getting baptized. So it's uh, kind of a special day we're going to have in the second service. So if you happen to be there for that, you you be able to see that even children who aren't adults yet we consider part of God's family. 
And that's what John Wesley taught. He called, the, he called that baptismal grace. And then when we accept Jesus as our, as our Lord and Savior when we're older, we kind of uh, cement that, I like to say, for lack of a better word. But uh, So you guys have all been adopted if you have Jesus as your friend. Now, how many here have Jesus as your friend? Raise your hand. Then you've been adopted. Okay, you can, you can go tell your parents, guess what, I've been adopted, and when they give you a funny look, why? Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, I thank you that we become part of your family. And these young men and women, how precious they are in your sight and ours and their parents. We thank you for that adoption, that you make us part of your family that's a big family, a lot of people in that family. And it's not only now, it's for all eternity. It begins now. We give you thanks. Amen. Okay, you guys can go to your seats. Oh, look at here. Mick's got something for you. I'm reading from John Wesley's journal, December 16, 1738. Inasmuch as many cried out for exceeding joy and many fell to the ground as, as though dead, as soon as we, uh, we were recovered, a little fr from the awe and amazement at the presence of God, we broke out in one voice. Maith. 9th, 1739. In the evening while I was declaring that Jesus had given himself as a ransom for all, three persons almost at once sunk to the ground as though dead, having all their sins set in array before them. But in a short time they were raised up and knew that the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, had taken away their sins. We kneeled down and called upon God with strong cries and tears as we laid hands upon them. His journal, December 19, 1742. He opened his eyes and called for me, and from that hour he continued to recover from his illness till he was restored to perfect health. Page 306, A Healing Miracle. Page 256, Demons Cast Out. Page 258, Another Healing. Page 151, The Prophetic Word Spoken. Page 112, A de Demonic Person, The Demon Was Cast Out. And page 111, The Word of Knowledge Was Spoken. John Wesley was not a fanatic. In fact, he was crazily into the whole thing of propriety and doing things in order. But when you're moving and working in the Holy Spirit, things happen. Pentecostal grace, spiritual gifting. Well, what are the gifts of the Spirit? They're divine enablings that give us the means to partner with God for the reconciliation of the world. Not real complicated. Not real complicated. There is a mega church in Missouri that grew from a small house church to a congregation of 800, and they never had a pastor. It was all done by lay people. Now, some people scratch their head and say, how'd they pull that off? Well, I think that was difficult, but they did it. And here's why. It's not about office. It's about function. What do I mean by that? It's by your gifting of the Holy Spirit and not how many degrees or what you've done to try to accomplish many things, such as cemetery, I mean seminary. Now, I've got a seminary degree, a uh, master's, I've got a doctorate. Uh, you know, <laughs> those aren't bad things, but that's not where the power lies. It lies with the Holy Spirit. Now, eventually, that congregation hired a pastor, but they hired a person with the gift of administration because they had too many balls to juggle in that size of a church. 
The preaching, the teaching, the evangelism was done by a committee of members from the church. Friends, spiritual gifts are necessary because the work of the Great Commission that God calls us to is much larger than we can accomplish in our own strength. We cannot do it. It's beyond human ability. Spiritual gifts are not to be confused with the fruit of the Spirit, which Paul talks about in Galatians 5, which is, you know, your love, joy, peace, self-confidence, etc., or to be confused with talents. Talents are a different thing. Spiritual gifts are not to be confused with natural talents, as I said. The gift of teaching can be expressed through music. It can be expressed through lecture. It can be expressed through drama. It can be expressed so many different ways. The gift of the Holy Spirit are the gifts of the Holy Spirit are list, listed primarily in three different places, and the insert you have in your bulletin has them there. The two, there's two groups: the enabling gifts and the service gifts. The service gifts are much more numerous and more important in the body of Christ for obvious reasons. The other gifts are a little more showy. I hate to use that term. I don't know what other term to use. But every spirit-filled Christian has at least one spiritual gift. Some, I have known some that have six or eight. Let's look at the use of these gifts in the body of Christ. In our book of Acts, which was read today in our scripture, Philip is at work in Samaria. And uh, he was casting out demons um, he was doing evangelism. He was teaching. We have the working of miracles, discernment, and healing all going on. We can see these gifts in operation. And it says there was much joy in that city, for the Holy Spirit was at work in Philip and those who received Christ. Notice both. Not only Philip, but those who received him. See, the gifts aren't just for the preacher. They're for all of us. I love the story of the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. The Holy Spirit tells Philip, start heading south on the road down to Gaza. And he comes up on a carriage carrying a eunuch from Ethiopia. He was a Jew. He had come to worship. In fact, when I went to Israel, the first, the, when I went to Israel, um, there was a lot of black Jews, and they had come as an airlift out of Ethiopia because they began to receive persecution in that country. Jews, Christians, the enemy is going to come after you. And Philip was walking along his carriage, and he heard him and, you know, reading, and Philip asked him, do you, know what, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch says, no, how can I? Who's this about, this, this person that is to suffer and die and, and like a sheep before its shears, never said a word? Philip says, let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> let me tell you about Jesus. You see, the working of miracles, teaching, evangelism, wisdom, and knowledge, all those gifts taking place when Philip is spending this time with this Ethiopian eunuch. I just love it. What do you think was the reason God sent him on that road to meet that eunuch? Because he was going back to Ethiopia. And what would he go back to Ethiopia and tell his people about? Jesus. Gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit are always given to point back to Jesus. Now Acts chapter 10, 44, 48. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is a but God moment. Cornelius sees a vision. And they send for Peter. And Peter comes with some of the other Jews with him. And now remember, Cornelius is a God-fearer. He's a Gentile that worships Yahweh, okay? The Hebrew God, our God. And Peter's going to go down there to, um, uh, because uh, Cornelius sees this angel who tells him to send for Peter. And Peter comes. And uh, Cornelius and his whole family and friends have all gathered together. And they're kind of excited. They want to hear what this, this man has to say. So Peter begins to tell them the gospel. And I just, I love this one. <clears throat> this is such a God thing. This is such a but God. Peter 
doesn't even get to the altar call. The choir doesn't even get to sing just as I am. And the Holy Spirit falls on the family and friends of Cornelius. I just love it. They fall under the Spirit's influence. Um, one of the things that, that was manifest was speaking in tongues. Doesn't happen all the time, but in this particular case it did. Witnessed a similar experience in the Shurtur province of Andhra Pradesh in southern India. We went to a village that had no Christians. They were Hindu and Muslims, poor people, people that only spoke Telugu. And they came and, and they listened to what the speaker was saying. I was not preaching, I didn't say a thing, I was just observing. And before the evangelist even got to the point where he was telling them about accepting Christ, the Holy Spirit fell on these people. Some of them began to praise God. Others were speaking in tongues. It was just, it was, I'm sitting back there and talking to the missionary. I thought, wow. I'm going to tell you the story of T.M. Valley. Missionary Arthur Raj, who went to, went to seminary with him, had a vision. He purchased five hectares of land, and his vision was to have a Bible college, a school for elementary kids, a place where they could grow much of their own food, and today they have mangoes and bananas and jackfruit, and they raise rice and vegetables. <laughs> In fact, when I was there, I, I didn't understand all the, lo, uh, the lingo, and, and they were, we were getting ready to fix some, some curry, and, and Arthur says, go get some coriander. It's right over there. Well, I walked over there, and I looked around, and uh, I said, cardamom, cilantro. I went back, and Arthur, I says, what's coriander? He said, it's cilantro. Oh, I get it. I went back, got him some cilantro. <clears throat> Today, there is a Bible college where, some, where people who are studying for the ministry, men and women, come. There is a school for orphans. They don't have things like we have in America where people get taken care of by the government. They also have a little home there where widow ladies come and they live and they work at the compound for their room and board. Apostleship, that is the gift of planning churches. Apostleship, teaching, giving aid, helps, administration and service have all been at TM Valley as well as healing and other types of gifts that have been as they go out to the surrounding villages. Number one, these gifts will be most important and abundant in any given church. That is the gift of helps, giving aid, giving, acts of mercy, and administration. And a school administrator or a government administrator or a business administrator is not necessarily a good church administrator. A church administrator that has the Holy Spirit gift of administration understands the goals and vision of the church of Jesus Christ, how to juggle all them balls, and how to keep everybody going in the right direction. These are the service gifts. Then there's the prophetic gifts, knowledge, discernment, prophecy, exhortation. I have received words of knowledge. I have had prophetic discernment once in a while. Some of these gifts aren't always automatic and all the time. Number three, there, here's the group of enabling gifts. These are the leadership gifts. Apostleship, teaching, evangelism, and prophecy. Anybody who's in the pulpit ought to have one or more of those gifts. That have one or more. And then there's the miraculous gifts. Faith, working of miracles, healing, those kinds of miraculous gifts. And then the last group is what I call the personal gifts, tongues and interpretation of tongues. They are for self-edification and edification of the body of Christ. Now I want to tell you Ray Hundley's story. Ray was my professor of exegesis at Asbury Seminary. And Ray was a missionary through OMS for years down in Colombia, and most of the OMS missionaries had to leave because of 
the, the, the rebels and stuff like that who were capturing Americans and holding them for ransom to get money to fund their cause. Ray was charismatic. He had shared with our class, and he told the story to the whole class. He says, I have prayed for a half a dozen, I've prayed for hundreds of people, but he says, I had a half a dozen that were healed. Boom. And he says, every one of them that got healed, I knew they were going to get healed the moment I prayed for them. And he says, it's not that I don't pray for others, I do. But he says, God has specific reasons why he does and does not do it. His dad was on life support in the hospital while Ray was in Columbia. The family contacted him and says, you have to come home. Dad is not expected to live out the week. Ray said he was on the airplane returning to come back, trying to write a funeral sermon about his father, who was a man of God. Ray says, I couldn't get anything, anything to come to mind. And I prayed to God, and Ray said, the Holy Spirit told me I'm going to heal him. So he walks into there on an intensive care, and his dad's all wired up with hoses and everything else. You know, if you've been in an IC unit, you know what I'm talking about. And he goes up to his dad, and his sister, brother, others are there around him, and his one sister said, Ray, pray for his healing. And Ray says, I don't know why God's doing this, but he's going to heal him, and he prayed for him. He says, the, the, the <laughs> bells and whistles began to go off because his, his, it all changed. His vitals began to change. And nurses come in, wondered what was going on. He said within a couple of hours, they had the breathing tube and everything else out of his dad, and he left the ICU the next day. Well, when that kind of stuff happens, people begin to ask questions. The doctor called Ray up on the phone and says, and we need to talk. So Ray goes in there, and the doctor said, what'd you do to your dad? I said, I didn't do anything. God did it. That's kind of a tough thing to say because a lot of people think. Then the doctor looks at Ray and says, I got this gal, stage four cancer, laying in bed with an oxygen tent, no hair left in her. This is Ray describing the situation. Down to 80 pounds, Ray thought, oh, no, it does not work this way. That, that, this is exact words Ray shared. It doesn't work this way. Doctor says, would you go pray for her? So Ray goes in, prays for her. Two weeks later, she leaves the hospital. Cancer gone. The doctor sits down and says, I'm a Jew. Tell me about your Jesus. Now, why do you think those two people were healed? I can give you some personal examples. Trace Diaz, Minnesota. A fella come up to me who had forgotten his meds. He lived 165 miles away. He had been dropped off, had no means of transportation, was on some pretty powerful meds, and he says, I, don't, I can't make it through this weekend without this one drug I'm taking. Will you pray for me? I said, okay, I'll do it. So I got a couple of the other guys. I was a spiritual director. We anointed him with oil. We prayed over him. He was fine all weekend. Comes up to me Sunday and says, I think I'm cur cured. And I said, wait a minute. Now, I'm, I'm a skeptical. I'm a skeptic. I said, now, just wait a minute. I said, sometimes these drugs we take are in our system for a long time. So I said, you go back on Monday and you start taking your drugs. And if you have a reaction to them drugs, you've probably been cured. If you haven't, you haven't been cured. God's just given you a dispensation to get through the weekend. That happens sometimes. I had a gal. She was ready to give a talk. She couldn't even get out of bed. The migraine was so bad. I went in there. It was all dark in the room. I went in there with a couple other gals because this was a women, woman's weekend. I wasn't going in there by myself. We anointed her with oil. We laid hands upon her. We prayed for her. She was up in 20 minutes giving her talk. Now, was she cured miraculously? Eee. Migraines are funny things. But it might have been. I am skeptical. Migraines are hard to predict, and they come and they go. Forgetting meds, you know, I mean. But a young man asked for prayer to receive the Holy Spirit on a Trace Diaz weekend. 
He received the Holy Spirit, fell down as though dead, just like John Wesley uh, uh, says happened. He gets up a short time later, short time later, and he begins to speak in tongues. Thirty minutes later, a team member came in for prayer into the chapel. His arm is in a sling. He's got a torn rotator cuff. He's had a medical diagnosis of such. Surgery is scheduled for Thursday of the following week. The young man who just spoke in tongues said, I think God is leading me to pray for him for his healing. I says, okay, man, if you feel, let's do it. It ain't going to hurt anything. So we anointed him with oil, gathered around, and prayed for him. The man said he felt a sharp pain going up his arm and to his shoulders. Then the calmness came over him. He removed his sling and was able to do this. That one probably was a healing. Man had a medical diagnosis of HIV AIDS in India. You go to a prostitute in India, it's like playing Russian roulette with a six-shooter with three bullets in it. I'll let you think about that one. He was advanced stage of HIV AIDS, had a diagnosis of it from the local hospital. He was 80 pounds, skin and bones, lying in a bed, curled up in the fetal position, skin cancer lesions all over his body. We anointed him with oil. When the missionary laid hands on him and prayed for him, it was like there was a great flinch. Nothing happened right away. Within several weeks, all signs of the disease was gone. He returned to the hospital. No trace of the HIV was found. Now, he was a Hindu was a Hindu. <laughs> He's now a follower of Jesus Christ. Jeez, I wonder why. Here comes the part I always love. The doctor comes knocking on the door. <laughs> Tell me what kind of medicine you gave him to cure his AIDS. <laughs> I, just, I love it. I can't help but laugh and I just got to love it. The missionaries were able to witness to the medical team that came from the hospital of the healing power of Jesus Christ. Miracles usually occur where evangelism's going on. And if evangelism isn't going on, miracles usually aren't occurring. Is it any surprise the Church of Jesus Christ in North America is decreasing by 3% a year membership? Jesus told his disciple, when the comforter comes, he will take what is mine and he will make it known to you. The Holy Spirit in the power and the gifts that he gives comes to us so that what? We can make Jesus known. The Holy Spirit's ministry is one of guidance, of comfort, of conviction, of empowerment, of revealing the things of God, of warfare, of enablement. Those are the gifts. Personally, my strongest gifts are teaching, giving, and evangelism. I've also, at time to time, had prophecy, knowledge, interpretation of tongues, and have prayed for healing. Spiritual gifting. My friends, more than ever in the future, the church of Jesus Christ is going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. I have a word. God is about to shake the tree. He's about to shake the tree. Not only in this country, but around the world for Christianity. How are we going to react? Will we fall to the ground? Or will we remain strong? Friends, we need the Holy Spirit. so that we have the power to reveal to a world a God that loves and cares for him. Let us pray. Our opening sentence of prayer and trace Deus has come, Holy Spirit, fell our hearts. Kindle them in the fire of your love. Oh, God, we need that love. Give us a desire in our hearts for the lost, for our neighbors, for our classmates at school, the people we work with and work for, our brothers and sisters here at church, 
You know, I'm, I'm not naive to think that everybody walks through that door is saved and on their way to heaven. <sighs> oh, power from on high, come and rain down upon us. Fill us. Give us that, that impetus to see the world transformed right here in winter South Dakota. For we're going to need this when the tree is about to be shaken. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and give him all the glory and honor. Amen. Clint, time to go to work the Lord in prayer. Are there any needs we need to lift up this morning? Anybody need any kind of special prayer for anything? Right there, Lana. I would lift up Twyla Rice. She's been experiencing some trouble with her vision and balance and um, somewhat like stroke symptoms, but it's not a stroke but she needs prayer. Go ahead, Clint. Lift her up. Lord, we just lift up Twyla to you today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would your hand be upon her? Yeah. Uh, Jesus' name. Calm this storm yeah, in this Holy Spirit, period that her. she's going through, mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. And just give her your peace. Yes. yes. In your holy name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I'd like to ask for prayers for Trent's dad. He had a biopsy this week and it didn't go that well. He's gonna be visiting with the doctor this week um, and he's not really able to do chores. So the boys are helping and Michael left him. So I just pray for healing and that you kind of calm his mind and that he knows Jesus. Okay, um, what, what's Trent's dad's name? George. George. Lord God in heaven, I lift up George in the name of Jesus Christ. I put him in your hands. Holy Spirit, come upon him in power. Let him feel your peace and your pre presence. Just bring that comfort, which you are, you are called the comforter, and we're just praying that you bring that upon him right now. And we pray, Lord, through the healing power of Jesus Christ, you would just touch this man right now. We're praying this in the name of Christ. Amen. Anyone else? Right there, Rachel. Tina Jones, um, she grew up here and graduated from Winter High School with me. Mm. Um, she was in a pretty bad car accident with her 14-year-old daughter, Izzy, about a week and a half ago. Tina broke several bones and has internal lacerations. She's doing well and she's home, but Izzy, um, they had to remove her spleen and mm. has been um, intubated. Last I knew, she was off the ventilator and breathing on her own, but still not awake, and she has several broken bones as well. Okay, I'm going to lift her up. Izzy is her name? Okay. Let's, uh, we're just going to pray through proxy right here through Rachel. Lord, we, we just want to lift up Tina and Lizzie to yeah, you. right now, Lord. And uh, we know Heal that your hand is there, bones. Lord. Mm. And that, uh, that you are with them. And you are the great comforter and healer, yeah. Lord. We just ask for your peace and presence over them. Yes, yes. And their we loved, do. loved ones. We just ask it in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? You got one back here, Clint? Oh, yep. We'll get to you, Rita. For my brother's wife, Carol, she has Alzheimer's and she's been placed on hospice. Okay. Lord God, we just lift up Carol right now. Um, this 
this malady that afflicts us and our elderly uh, is so difficult for family and, and spouses and children. Uh, Lord, I've dealt this with my, in my family, and, and, and I know that um, many, many, many of us have had to deal with this. And, and I'm just praying patience. Uh, I'm praying discernment. Lord, stop the, the, the progression of this disease, I pray. Um, that, is, that is our desire that, Lord, you just be free from this and, and have, a, have that mental clarity, uh, Lord, that we, we all cherish so much. And I'm praying this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rita. No, 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 give her. You got to get your, you got to eat it. <laughs> Donna and Daryl shipping needs everybody's prayers. Daryl is not doing well, and Donna's the caregiver. It's really tough for both of them. Okay. Go ahead, Glenn. Lord, we just want to lift up Daryl to you as yeah. Donna's having a hard time looking mm. after him. And, mm. uh, Many of us have been down that road, Lord. Uh, we just lift up Daryl to your loving arms. Yeah. That, uh, that your power and presence be with them. Give Donna the strength to, to face each day anew. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Just to give you some updates on Alice, the family member called me and told me that they're, uh, she's rallied. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. She's. We got another one here. We should remember the Brunemeyer family. They lost a, their son and grandson in a car accident. Okay. Lord, we, we pray for this family who is in very much acute grief. He's lost a son and a grandson. Uh, I, I can't even imagine. I know when I've had to do funerals of young people, especially those who died in accidents it's very very difficult very hard so I'm praying Lord that you just break through this grief and uh, be to them that God of comfort and peace um, hmm. just pull them closer to you Lord in Jesus name I pray amen anyone else okay. I have one we'll pray up here Um, as you all know, we've had our vote. We've made a decision. Um, I don't believe this is the hardest decision we're going to face as a church. I believe in the future it's going to be much, much more difficult to be a practicing believer. That's my heart of hearts. I don't have a word from the Lord on that, but the way I see things going. Uh, but I want us, I don't want any gloating. I don't want any of that kind of stuff. And remember the people that weren't for this dis disassociation are our brothers and sisters in the Lord and our family members of this church. Continue to love them, to, to talk to them, to not avoid them, and to treat them as people for whom Christ has died, okay? Let's just do that. Let's remember to do that. Let's remember to be like Christ. Lord God in heaven, let us be people who Look at every single person as a person for whom Christ has died and to bring them the most love and respect that we can. For we can still have unity when we disagree, and that unity is Jesus and the gospel, even when we disagree on some of the particulars of how we do that and how we express that. And so I just pray for this situation. I pray that you bring healing to this church but I also pray that you bring the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us for what's coming. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join together in that prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Will our ushers please come forward and we'll receive our morning offering. <laughs> well, Lord, we're so thankful for the gift of your Holy Spirit that comes and fills us, anoints us with your grace and your mercy that gives us those gifts to get the job done. And we're grateful, and we give you thanks. Receive this offering. It is a token of our appreciation and gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen.
as you are. That's all we need to do, and His Spirit will fill us. May the power of God be in your heart and in your life to be that witness, to spread the love of God and the good news that we can be forgiven. Amen. Go in peace. To the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He's above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. Jesus. Go and have a good week. <coughs> Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good. He's above all things. His love endures
Desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for. 